Our topic for this video is, what is a function? We'll start to define a function by saying that we first need to understand a relation. And a relation is some relationship between two sets. They can be sets of numbers or just sets. So for example, if we have a group of students, we can ask each student, what is their identification number? Their student ID would probably be better than something like their social security number. So if we ask Elisa what her student ID is, she might tell us it's A2348. We ask Barrow and he says, oh, it's A5982. And Carlos tells us it's A1093. And Damien tells us it's A4037. And Elsie tells us it's A9134. They are all unique. Every student has their own ID number. And so we're just forming a relationship between two sets. The first set is the set of students. And the second set is the set of student IDs. And there's a well-defined relationship between those. Let's take another example, maybe a more practical example. Let's look at what happens when you're at a grocery store. You might have several items in your basket and go to check yourself out. And when you go to check yourself out, each item rings up for a price. So for example, milk rings up for $4.29, bread for $1.89, you have two boxes of cereal, each one rings up for $3.49. Uh, we have cheese, which rings up for $4.29. And then we have three packages of ramen. They were on sale. You could either buy them for $0.49 cents each or three for $0.98. Cents. And so uh, when you get to the third ramen, it actually costs $0. And so that's a relation between the items in the grocery store and their prices. It is a relation may bother you a bit that ramen has two different prices and we'll get to that in a second. So again, we have two sets. We have the grocery store items and we have their prices. So we have a set of items and a set of prices. We could make a slightly more compact version of this by listing each item just once with its price. So for example, we could write that milk rings up for $4.29 and bread for $1.89, cereal for $3.49, cheese for $4.29, and finally ramen, which actually has two prices. It has a price of 49 cents and a price of zero. So that would be maybe a more compact list with our set of items on the left and our set of prices on the right. Here's a relationship that comes out of the news. This is a relationship between the number of years after 2000 and the number of Hispanic eligible voters in the United States. So we have four pairs of data points and we could write out a set for this one. So the top line represents years after 2000, and we have two, six, 10, and 14 years after 2000. So we could make a set of years. So there's the year 2002, the year 2006, 2010, and 2014. So this is our input set, that is years. And when we look at those years, we can get out the values of what the number of Hispanic eligible voters in millions is. And so that would be 14.5, 17.3, 21.3, and 25.1. Each year gives us a different value. And so that set is the number of voters in millions. Okay, so I think we understand relations now, and much of what we do in the world with numbers has to do with relations. What's important about a relation is that if we have the case where every input has only one output, then we call that relation a function. So we need to carefully understand what the input and output sets are. And in each example in this lesson, the first set has been the input set, and the second set has been the output set. So we look up the year, we get the number of voters. We scan the item at the grocery store and we get the price. We ask the student for their ID number and they tell us. So that first set is the input set. 
Now I'm going to pause this video and let you consider which of the sets on this page are actually functions. And I'll give you a hint that at least one of them is not a function. So go ahead and pause the video and take a look and make a guess yourself. Hopefully you've now made a guess about which of these is not a function. And if you guessed that it's the second one, the grocery store graph, you are correct. The problem in the grocery store graph is the ramen noodles. The ramen noodles ring up for two different prices. So we have one input with two different outputs. The cereal is just fine because the same input produces the same output. But that ramen, that tells us it is not a function. If our two sets are both represented by numbers, we can see the relation between the two sets by looking at a graph. On the graph, the input is always the horizontal axis and the output is always the vertical axis. So let me go ahead and label that on the first graph. The first graph is a set of points. So we have a point at 0, 0, 1, 2.7, 2, 3.8, 3, 3.2, 4, 2.5, and 5, 3.1. For every input we have on the x-axis, how many outputs do we have? In each case, we have only one output. So this would be a function. Another way we can test this is using something called the vertical line test. That is, we can draw a vertical line through the graph, and if we can do that anywhere on the graph, and it only touches at one point, so let me draw some example lines. If it only touches at one point, or not at all, then this is a graph that passes the vertical line test, and so this is a function. The graph to the right of this one is exactly the same graph, but with one additional point. Now we also have a point at four, and if we were to do what we did on the previous page and write this as two sets, what we would see is we have a point at zero, that's the input, and the output is zero. Let me just make a table of values for this one. So I have my input and my output. This is another way to look at a graph. So we have zero, zero. We have one, 2.6. We have two, 3.8, three, 3.2, at four, this is where we start to run into problems. I have an output value of 2.6, and I have an output value of 1.5, and this is the thing that's gonna cause a problem with it being a function. Last, I have five, 3.1. So it's this two outputs for one input that causes the problem. And if we did a vertical line test, we can see the vertical line test fails at a value of four. So this one is not a function. I'm gonna pause the video at this point and have you take a look at the four graphs at the bottom of the page. Label the input and output for each graph and then decide whether the graph is or is not a function. Okay, hopefully you've taken a guess and discovered that two of these graphs are not functions. The first graph is a semicircle that's been rotated 45 degrees to the right or clockwise. And because of that, we can see that a vertical line passing through anywhere between the point two and three is gonna actually hit the curve twice. And it's because of this that it hits the curve twice in the same vertical line that we say this first one is not a function. The second graph is a curve that increases to two and then decreases to four and then increases to five. And any vertical line we draw through this one is only gonna pass through at one point. And for that reason, we can say that this one is a function. The graph in the bottom left is a semicircle, not rotated this time, with a point under the semicircle at one comma two. This is the problem. If we draw a vertical line through the value at one, it's gonna hit the point one comma two and it's gonna hit the semicircle. And so again, because it hits more than one point, this one is not a function. Finally, the last graph is a semicircle with the same point, so it's exactly the same, except that there's an open value at one, 1 1.8 on the semicircle. 
And so this means that the graph doesn't actually reach a value at 1. It's only the 1, 2 that has value. So if we draw a vertical line through this, it is definitely going to pass through the point 1, 2, but then it's going to skip the graph when it actually hits the graph because of that open value there. And so this one actually is a function. Let's review what we covered in this video. First, a relation is simply some relationship between two sets. It can be a set of numbers on both sides or it can be a set of something else. Second, a function is a relation where each input value has only one output. And we learned that something like our ramen noodle example, where the ramen noodles ring up for two different prices, is what causes something to be not a function. Finally, we learned about the vertical line test. If we can graph the function, in other words, if both sets are numbers, then we put the input on the horizontal axis and the output on the vertical axis. The vertical line test says that any vertical line that passes through the graph can touch at only one point. And if that's true, we say the graph is a function.